Everybody can see a Chinese soldier standing in the shooting position. He opens fire, the bullets hit human flesh. Tibetans fall to the ground. One of them seems to escape the bullets but is hit by a second round. Pema Somo, aged five, is one such Tibetan who crossed over the Himalayas with a monk from her village in Tibet to reach the Tibetan children's village. Pema's parents in Tibet made this heart-wrenching decision so that she would escape the dismal fate that faces every Tibetan under the Chinese occupation. Every month, 30 to 50 children arrive from Tibet at the Tibetan children's village, having escaped the murder in the Himalayas. The Tibetan children's village was established to take care of children affected by the human disaster in the wake of the Chinese attack on Tibet in 1959. Refugees from Tibet continue to pour into India, some of them as young as five years old, who are taken care of at the Tibetan children's village. My name is uh, Lindup. I was born in Tibet. I came to India in 1984 at the age of 10. Uh, 11, till class, uh, till age of 11, I was in Tibet. I have an uncle in Nepal. He came to Tibet in 1981 and he has knowledge about school in Dharamsala and then uh, he has seen also so he, when visit when he visited Tibet uh, he talked about this this school Dalai Lama he used to say Dalai Lama school then uh, then I was also inspired to you know uh, go, go to school and I never had a school in Tibet so and beside this, my parents also want me to uh, leave Tibet and get some education and get the blessing of His Holiness. And therefore, uh, the decision was, uh, you know, mutual decision by myself and my parents. And I'm from Tibet. Come and I arrived here in 2004. First, I joined TCVB. Uh, after I finished my class, then I joined Upper TCV. I think uh, 11, 11 years old. Oh. And I came to India when I was eight. I came with my brother and my mother. A lot still, uh, we have done much, but still lots to be done. We are still in exile, and whatever we do here in exile, uh, first and foremost, it's crucially important that we are doing this uh, in the context of what is happening back in Tibet. So from that point of view, despite the uh, iron grip with which China rules Tibet, I think there's going to be continued to, uh, we are going to continue to receive children out of Tibet, even if it's a trickle. But then I'm sure with the deteriorating situation in Tibet, people will somehow the other find ways to come out. And this is what we have to be all the time prepared, always wanting to do the best and, and meet the challenges as they come forward. And then apart from this, there are still many, many uh, impoverished children born in remote areas, inaccessible regions in the border. Presently, the Tibetan Children's Village takes care of over 16,000 children and teenagers. Uh, my name is Lofsang Tsomo. And I work as the project coordinator at the head office of the Tibetan Children's Village. Uh, I've been working here for the last 20 years now uh, and uh, in, in various capacities. And uh, as the project coordinator, maybe I've been associated for the last like seven years uh, when my former colleague left for his study program. And uh, I, I grew up uh, in the Children's Village here. So it's like uh, coming back to the family. Uh, I, I came here when I was eight years old uh, with my siblings when our father passed away. Uh, we used to live in the, one of the settlements in South India. And uh, since I was eight, I, I had lived my you know, whole school life here. Um, I've been working here, so it's been uh, 35 years since I, I'm in Dharamsala.
TCV's need is very vast and very situational, you know. Uh, with uh, more and more children coming out of Tibet in the early, uh, after the 80s, the, of the influx, the second influx of refugees coming out of uh, Tibet, uh, the needs, you know, we started to expand uh, into, you know, uh, across India uh, with uh, various different schools and uh, other facilities. Uh, our needs are like, uh, it expands every year, you know, with more and more children coming into our care. And uh, today we look uh, after over 16,000 children and uh, young youths in about 19 schools. More than education is the fact that TCB gave me this uh, sense of belonging. If someone asks me where I come from, I would say TCB most likely. And this I think is important, especially for people like us who are being dislocated from the place where I was born. So everything that I could identify myself was taken away from me. So there was nothing left of me. So TCB gave me that, you know, in that. Uh, because I was dislocated, it gave me a lot of uh, loneliness and isolation, dissolution. But then, then uh, the fact that TCV gave me that, that sense of belonging, that I belong here. And that, I think, it's very important, especially for, 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 for refugees, you know, that sense of belonging and the sense of identity that, that you have some, some, at least some kind of home away from home. You know, I think that that I think is really important. All Tibetans hope to go back to Tibet someday. You know, everybody, every Tibetan here, we've all lived at various places, you know, all over the world. Like, you know, I've lived here. There are so many Tibetans living in Canada, Australia, it, everywhere in Europe. But eventually, um, I think, maybe not right away, but we all hope to go back to Tibet. You know, that's where our country is. I mean, this is, that's our home. Since we have to disseminate the information, the requirements, the future requirements of Tibet. So of late, our emphasis on higher studies is more students in the specialized studies. This is a greater focus because future Tibet will need many professionals. So this is where we will try to disperse them into different areas of studies. So specialized is one focus. We want as many of them to spread out in different fields of study. This is very crucial. And uh, this is where His Holiness is not only the immediate need, it's in keeping with the long-term needs of future Tibet. Uh, um, my name is Tenzin Tashi. Tenzin Tashi. Tenzin Tashi. Yeah, and uh, that name was given by His Holiness uh, something. I want to develop something, uh, uh, software programming, some kind of uh, uh, iPhone uh, applications or maybe Android software to develop. I thought of doing that still kind of stuff. So till now. Uh, right from the beginning, His Holiness' vision for the Tibetan children to be future seeds of Tibet is they must not only have modern education, but it must be deeply rooted in our culture. That is the main reason why he insisted under Nehru to have separate schools for Tibetan so that we don't lose our identity, we don't lose our uh, culture. So this has been right from the being emphasized. Every Tibetan who, who are from TCV and other Tibetan school, you will see the Tibetan identity in each of them. It's all because of TCV. Because 
T-Pattern, T-Suite doesn't only provide uh, the modern education, but also um, Tibetan culture, language. Uh, to, to be a Tibetan, um, you have to be uh, Tibetan, right? You have to think Tibetan, you have to preserve your culture, and these Tibetan institutions like TCV is, in, is a vital player in making sure Tibetan uh, youngsters learn the cultural heritage to preserve the identity. Uh, and in that way, in that sense, TCV is a very important, takes a very important role. Helping Tibetan Children's Village is helping the most important asset of Tibet, the coming generation. Tibetan Children's Village is the place where five-year-old Pema Somo, who may never see her parent again, can lead a normal, happy childhood. Not doing anything is not an option. Let us help. Please make a donation for Tibetan Children's Village at the website of Tibet House of California today. Please point your browser to http colon forward slash forward slash thcal.us.